100 years and counting. Yes, the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University has been in existence for more than 10 decades. During these last 100 years, a great evolution in veterinary education and in the practice of veterinary medicine has occurred. The four-year DVM degree curriculum established in 1905 within the Kansas State Agricultural College, designed to train young men to care for the region's livestock, has become an internationally recognized program with a greatly expanded three-fold mission. Educating both male and female veterinarians for a wide variety of careers related to all animals, conducting basic and applied animal and human research, and providing primary, secondary, and tertiary care and diagnostic services for all non-human species of animals. During the past 100 years, not only has the scope and breadth of the college's programs changed dramatically, but many changes in the facilities, curriculum, and student body have also occurred. The 1907 Kansas State Agricultural College Annual stated that the increased number of livestock in the country and the increase in their individual value has called for a large supply of men who are capable of caring for this stock. The man who has a horse of high value naturally wishes to have it treated when ailing, and since in recent years the rearing of high bred stock has become very general, there is a large demand for men who understand veterinary medicine. This course is designed to equip men so that they will be competent to fill any position which their profession requires. During this time period, Theodore Roosevelt was president, Albert Einstein proposed his theory of relativity, and the first helicopter took flight. Workers earned an average of about $600 per year. A loaf of bread cost a nickel, postage stamps were two cents, a dozen eggs cost about 27 cents, and a pound of sugar was a nickel. Although the veterinary building, now known as Leisure Hall, was completed at a cost of about $70,000 in 1908, the first veterinary graduates from Kansas State Agriculture College were instructed in the armory the Farm Machinery Hall, and a small frame building north of the campus was used as a veterinary hospital. It was stated in the 1906 banner that the armory looked somewhat like a prison, although it was not intended for such purpose, nor was it used for such. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there. That's the 1911 Royal Purple stated, the course was originally four years with no technical or veterinary work in the first year. At present, and in the future, veterinary work begins the first day of the freshman year and continues throughout the four years. Its advantage over most veterinary schools lies in the fact that the students are required to take certain cultural work that tends to make them understand history and the problems of the day and make them more than merely horse doctors. Admission requirements to any of the departments of the Kansas State Agricultural College included being at least 14 years old and having finished two full years of high school. The course in veterinary medicine included in addition to the expected anatomy, physiology, bacteriology, pathology, parasitology, surgery, obstetrics, and materia medica, such courses as German, agricultural economics, philosophy, public speaking, and business law. Freshmen and sophomore students were required to take military drill, and chapel was scheduled for 30 minutes, four days per week. Junior and senior veterinary students were required to be in the clinics from one to six hours per day, depending on the cases at hand. Just before graduation on April 6, 1917, the United States entered World War I by declaring war on Germany. The War Industries Board was mobilized to control the economy, and food and fuel were rationed. High on the hit parade were over there until the clouds roll by. The average family income in 1917 was about $887. A loaf of bread was eight cents, a dozen eggs cost 47 cents, and a pound of sugar cost nine cents. Food prices doubled during the year. Clark candy bars and moon pies were introduced in 1917. On August 26, just before classes began in the fall of 1920, the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution guaranteeing women the right to vote was declared in effect. Warren G. Harding was inaugurated in 1921, and motorized vehicles were becoming very popular. There was no charge for tuition at Kansas State Agricultural College during this time. 
However, a matriculation fee of $10 for Kansas residents and $15 for non-residents was charged. An incidental fee of $25 per semester for residents and $37 for non-residents was also assessed. Each student was required to pay a health fee of $3 per semester, which entitled the student to receive the services of the college physician, medications, and free hospital service for three days, after which the fixed cost of hospitalization was $1 per day. Each student was required to pay a student activity fee of $5 per semester. This fee gave the student admittance to all athletic events, to all intercollegiate debates, and oratorical contests, and to all band concerts. It was estimated that textbooks for the veterinary program would cost each student about $23 for the year. Representing the alumni of the 1920s is Dr. Philip Carter of the class of 1926. I recently celebrated my 100th birthday, so I'm happy to join the college in celebrating 100 years of success. To have my life parallel the life of an institution like the College of Veterinary Medicine is highly appreciated. Again, thank you. Happy birthday and good luck for the next century of excellence. Helen Sophie Rick was the first female to receive her DVM degree from the Kansas State College of Agriculture and Applied Science. Newspaper accounts regarding Ms. Rick stated that the pretty, shy, 17-year-old freshman female veterinary student didn't much like the publicity given her. Dr. Rick was the first female to obtain a license to practice veterinary medicine in Kansas. During 1933, the clinic acquired a complete x-ray outfit, including a fluoroscope attachment. Dean Dykster stated that it was one of the best instruments on the market. In the October 1, 1934, Kansas State Agricultural College Veterinary Alumni News, Dean Dykster stated, For many years, the Division of Veterinary Medicine has felt the need of a well-filled library located in Veterinary Hall. There is now an admirable collection of veterinary books and periodicals in the General College Library building. If the collection of books were in Veterinary Hall, so that they would be of easy access for browsing purposes by students in veterinary medicine, they would have a much more frequent and wider use. Is there an alumnus or friend of the Division of Veterinary Medicine able and willing to make a considerable donation to serve as an endowment fund for the establishment of a veterinary library and veterinary hall? A plea was made for older veterinarians to donate or bequeath their personal collections to the reading room when the last great summons comes. Although in many ways, 1940-41 to 41 was a typical college year at Kansas State Agricultural College, there was an ominous difference. For over all of the activities hung the shadow of the world conflict and uncertainty. For the first time in history, the national government authorized a peacetime draft for military training and more than a thousand Kansas State College boys registered. During the national election on November 5, 1940, Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected to an unprecedented third term. On January 29, 1942, veterinary students at Kansas State College were offered the opportunity to go into an accelerated curriculum to allow the graduation of an adequate number of veterinarians to cover both military needs and private needs. Veterinary students on the accelerated program could graduate in three years by attending classes during the summers. A total of 137 hours of work were still required to graduate with the DVM degree. During the second year of the curriculum, veterinary students were required to be in class from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. On July 1, 1942, the Kansas Board of Regents changed the name of the Division of Veterinary Medicine to School of Veterinary Medicine. Although the college's first black graduate was Dr. John William Brown in 1912, Segregation was very evident during the 1940s. Alumni fellow Dr. Walter Bowie of the class of 1947 reflects on what it was like to be a black student during this era. What was the climate like for a minority student? Uh, did you f feel pressures uh, 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 at that time? Well, it was tough. Yeah. Uh, let's think back, you reflect on the time we're talking about. We're talking about the early 40s, early and mid 40s. 
And at that time, uh, black students were not staying on campus. We were all living in the Negro community down on Yuma Street, so we had to walk back and forth. Aggieville was um, a place where we did some shopping, but even the theater was segregated uh, at that time uh, in the early 40s. Uh, even on campus, uh, we had access to all of the facilities except the swimming pool. And that you may not know. No, I didn't know this. I'm sure. I didn't know this. Uh, we, uh, we uh, would go over to Ahern, is that it, uh, Jim? We had Nichols. Nichols, Nichols okay. Nichols at that time, yes. Nichols gym, Gymnasium. Uh, but uh, the swimming uh, uh, courses, uh, the periods that we were supposed to swim, we were told that we did not need to come to class. So it was an interesting time. Oh, you gosh. See, back then. Yeah. Very interesting time. You know, uh, for those of us that were <coughs> side by side with you, we didn't realize I'm sure, that either. I'm sure. And it and, and didn't come home to us. During most of the 1950s, Dwight D. Eisenhower served as president, and Elvis Presley literally rocked the music world. Russia successfully launched the first man made orbiting satellite and Alaska and Hawaii became states. Civil defense drills were common and people feared the Russians. Near the end of the decade, Kansas State College was renamed Kansas State University. The $575,000 Dykstra Veterinary Hospital was completed during February of 1955. The east wing of the building housed the small animal hospital and could house 100 small animals. There were 54 large animal stalls, eight of which were steam heated. The hospital had a hayloft big enough to store 70 tons of hay and had a special room for the preparation of food for small animal diets. The new building contained an amphitheater large enough to seat 285. A large Alaskan Kodiak bearskin hung on the south wall of the demonstration room. On the second floor of the new hospital was a conference room wired for television, biologic display cabinets, storerooms, student lockers, and intern quarters for 10 senior students. A Hereford bull from Oklahoma was the first patient to have surgery in the new veterinary hospital. Approximately 23,000 animals were handled during the first year of the hospital's operation. Representing the alumni of the 1950s is Dr. Dan Upson of the class of 1952. We happened to be the last class that was allowed to enter the College of Veterinary Medicine with only one year of pre-veterinary medicine. In the early to mid-50s, uh, students were quite a bit older than they are now. Uh, I know in my class, all but, I think, eight people had uh, served in World War II. These, uh, in our class, the older uh, guys kept us young guys in line. The 1960s were marked by the assassination of President Kennedy and the Vietnam War. Late in the decade, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to walk on the moon. During the fall of 1961, the Department of Surgery and Medicine purchased a new ambulatory vehicle with a refrigerator, hot and cold running water, electricity for operating equipment such as clippers, and compartments for drugs, vaccines, instruments, and other equipment. During 1960-61, more than 18,000 patients were seen by the ambulatory clinic. It was announced in the October 1, 1966 Veterinary Alumni News that room three in Veterinary Hall would be remodeled to house a new electron microscope and laboratory within the Department of Anatomy. The new equipment cost approximately $40,000. Final drawings for the Veterinary Medicine Sciences Building were completed during 1968, and long-range plans were being developed for a research farm donated by Dr. E.J. Frick. Oh, it was an exciting day during the fall of 1968 when KSU's football team blanked the University of Nebraska 12-0. Representing the alumni of the 1960s is alumni fellow Dr. Ross Clark of the class of 1963. Uh, we look back now at uh, how devoted the faculty, look at really a fairly small faculty 
that was teaching uh, quite a number of students and that they they participated in parties and and uh, so it was a really uh, great community the 1970s are remembered as the building decade the decade during which Coles Hall, Trotter Hall, and Moser Hall were built. Ranking as the second most expensive building in the history of Kansas, the new $17 million teaching hospital and pathology building were completed in 1978. There were two major concerns regarding the new building after construction began. Would it, unlike the two original buildings in the complex, be air conditioned from the beginning, and would the university power plant have enough capacity to adequately power the building? During the construction of the first two buildings, there were not sufficient funds to build large enough cooling towers to operate the required air conditioning units. The AVMA Council and Education Site Visit Team visited the college on February 13th through the 15th, 1978, for accreditation purposes. The college was informed during early May that full accreditation was extended for another seven years. Representing the alumni of the 1970s is alumni fellow Dr. Nancy Jacks of the class of 1973. Historically, it was interesting. I had the first class. Uh, I was in the graduating class of 1973. My class was the largest group of women um, that had ever been admitted to the college. This was before anyone heard of EEO or Equal Opportunity for Women. And up till that time, there had never been more than two women in a class. And how many were there? Eight. Eight women. Everybody always remembers, I think, their interview to get into vet school because, of course, it's a very traumatic time. And you're sitting up uh, in this line, and everybody was taking about 15 minutes. And when I went in, my interview lasted 45 minutes. <laughs> Dr. E.J. Frick was on my interview what board. What did Dr. Frick ask? Uh, it's interesting. Because I still remember to this day. Uh, there were a series of questions. Uh, he said, well, uh, how do we know that, that you just aren't wanting to go to vet school because you want to find a husband? Then he kind of closed with, uh, he, he went through this long song and dance that uh, did I realize that I was keeping some, uh, if I was allowed in, I would be keeping some fine, upstanding young man who was trying to support a wife and a family uh, out of a, a position in a school. And who else was on the faculty at that time? Well, you uh, were. <laughs> oh, yes. I've been around forever. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Jane Westfall, who's still yes, here. Yes, yes. Um, Dr. Neil Anderson. Um, Dr. Dr. Weiss. Dr. Norsey, um, certainly Dr. Upson, uh, Fry. Fry, Cole, uh, Rudy Clarenberg. Yes. Uh, we had physio PCAM, we had seven minute breaks because Joanne Baldwin smoked Benson and Hedges and she informed him it was absolutely impossible to smoke a cigarette in less than seven and a half minutes. <laughs> so that's how our break periods were determined for, for PCAM. Uh, Dr. Carnahan, uh, Dr. Guffey, uh, and of course then uh, uh, pathology, which we've talked about, Dr. Leipold, Dr. McGavin. It was announced in 1986 that a comprehensive agreement with the University of Nebraska to establish a joint program in teaching and research was made. The essentials of the agreement included reserving positions for approximately 30 Nebraska residents per year beginning with the entering class in the fall of 1987 shared research facilities at both institutions, including the isolation facility at the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, and a joint program in undergraduate and graduate instruction at the Meat Animal Research Center at Clay Center, Nebraska. John Weefault became the 12th president in the 124-year history of Kansas State University on October 30, 1986. Weefault said the greatest challenge that the university was facing at the time of his inauguration was the ability to continue to do a good job academically in an era of scarce resources. Both locally and nationally, many significant occurrences were observed during the 1980s. After 38 years of service, Ahern Fieldhouse witnessed its last basketball game. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeted an alarming 508.32 points on October 19, 1987, a worse drop than on October 28, 1929, which signaled the beginning of the Great Depression. Senator Bob Dole returned to Kansas to announce to a crowd of more than 7,000 people his candidacy for the Republican nomination for the presidency in 1988, and the Manhattan Town Center opened on October 26, 1987. Representing the alumni of the 1980s is Dr. Mary Baglotti Swanson of the class of 1989. 
When I think back to veterinary school, I, I think of a lot of friends I made that I still have today. I, I think of a lot of late nights, um, a lot of late nights studying in the sheer volume of material that we had to learn. I remember it, when I was a student, I, I did worry a little bit about what exactly I would do in veterinary medicine because there are a lot of different opportunities and how I would do out in the real world after graduating from veterinary school. Dedication ceremonies for the Hills National Center for Veterinary Practice Management were held during 1991 in the renovated fourth floor of Trotter Hall. The birthing center at the Kansas State Fair held in Hutchinson soon became one of the top attractions. During the 1996 fair, five cows calved and nine sows farrowed. The smallest litter contained 10 pigs and the largest 16. It has been estimated that more than 100,000 people visit the birthing center annually. The flood during the summer of 1993 will never be forgotten by anyone living in Manhattan at the time. More than 1,300 homes in the area were abandoned, leaving many families and animals temporarily homeless. More than 150 homeless pets and about 25 large animals found shelter at the Kansas State University Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital during the summer. The Wildcat Express, a 24-foot, environmentally controlled motor coach with 12 built-in cages went on the road for the first time during July of 1996. It was equipped to transport referred, non-emergency patients to specialists at the Veterinary Teaching Hospital from Lincoln, Omaha, and Wichita. Representing the alumni of the 1990s is Dr. Julianne Thompson Evans of the class of 1999. My years at Kansas State Veterinary College, I think about the, first of all, the good friends that I made, um, colleagues that will be my lifelong uh, friends. While I was a veterinary student, there were many different things going on in the world. Um, the Oklahoma City bombing happened at the beginning of my veterinary career. Um, we had the O.J. Simpson trial. Um, we had um, possible impeachment of President Clinton. There are a lot of things I worried about while I was in veterinary college. The number one thing being money and whether I was going to have enough money to make it to graduation, to pay my rent, to buy food. Um, I also worried about graduating. I worried about taking boards. Um, I worried about getting enough sleep so that I could stay awake in equine medicine rounds. There were great concerns and many hours of preparation to handle computer problems which never occurred at the beginning of the year 2000. It was feared that nearly everything containing computers, including cars and airplanes, would fail at the beginning of the new millennium. During the summer of 2001, a fire thought to be started by an arsonist destroyed a faculty office on the third floor of Coles Hall. The fire caused a total of $600,000 in damage, including cleanup costs, computers, furniture, and equipment. Because of the fire, a 12-year-old flow cetometer had to be replaced at a cost of about $38,000. No suspects were identified, nor were any explanations for the fire given. During the fall of 2004, 63 third-year veterinary students from St. George's University in Grenada and their faculty moved temporarily to Manhattan to complete their fall semester. This was necessary because Hurricane Ivan destroyed about 90% of the buildings on Grenada. Site preparation began during late August 2004 for the new BSL-3 Agricultural Research Building, immediately north of Mosier Hall. This $52 million building completed the original plans for the veterinary complex to have four major buildings. Representing the alumni of the first decade of the new millennium are Drs. Brandy McGreer and Corbin Hodges of the class of 2005. To the class of 2005, wow, we made it. None of us were aware of what was to come. The work, the play, the sweat, the laughter, the tears, the late nights, and the even earlier mornings cramming for exams, and maybe even an ulcer or two to join us on our way. These 108 people have come from across the country to spend four years becoming a family, albeit a dysfunctional one. 
There is a genuine connection between each and every one of us. And as we leave this small Kansas town and head back across the country, I wish you all the best of luck. I have always said that veterinary school was the biggest dichotomy. It was the absolute best thing I had ever done, and it was the absolute worst thing I had ever done. And as we went through school, it never ceased to amaze me when people would comment, ooh, you're in veterinary school, that is so fantastic. I have always wanted to be a veterinarian. That must be so much fun. Yes, we were and are beyond fortunate to have had this experience and to have the career, the life that we are now embarking upon. So as we move forward, I encourage us all to frequently take a moment, even at the worst of times, when your patient's not cooperating, when your pager has incessantly gone off at 2 a.m. every night for the last week, and when it seems that in the past few days you just haven't had a moment to even breathe. I encourage us to remember those people who have always wanted to be a veterinarian but for whatever reason will not join us in our profession. We truly are very lucky and very blessed to have been given this opportunity, this gift. I'm Ralph Richardson, Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and I'm pleased to be joined by the president of our great Thank university, you, John Weefald. Thank you. We're standing in front of the newest construction at Kansas State University, the Biosecurity Research Institute, just north of the Veterinary Medicine Complex. This is an example of the kind of thing that we are doing to build for the future. We are now over 100 years old. We have built upon the shoulders of giants, and we are in the process of preparing our students for the future to do the kind of research that will make a difference and to provide the assurance that animals will be safe and healthy in the future. We also want to assure that we provide a safe food supply as we relate to animal production for this state, for this nation, and for this world. Well, thank you very much. And I want to thank you and all of the leaders who preceded you that have made our K-State College of Veterinary Medicine one of the best, not only in America, but the whole world. And so a hundred years of a commitment to excellence and the opportunity that so many students over the years have had to attend our college, 5,500 graduates over a hundred years all over America and all over the world, what a proud legacy. And then right behind us will be the latest addition to our whole veterinary complex here. This will be a food safety and security building second to none in America and the world. What a partnership we have here, Ralph. Thank you for your great job, and I want to say God bless to all of our graduates out there. Great, thank you. What a foundation we've built upon. What a bright future we have. Thank you.